You're our equity analyst for the week. Right. Uh, this story about how the taxi association in uh, South Africa wants to start an airline. I'm thinking I've got a lot of investors that invest with us and uh, it could be an attractive one if we could participate in a consortium. What's your feeling about this uh, project as it breaks? Yeah, absolutely. This is huge. This is big, big news. I mean, uh, taxi association have long been known for doing things no frills. No, no steering wheels, no brakes, <laughs> no anything else. So I think uh, taking it to the air is the next step for them. Um, you know, they're saying that this is going to be uh, 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 targeted at black uh, crowds and black communities right. in an attempt to try and get them to parts of South Africa that are very difficult to otherwise reach, you know, for funerals and family business and that sort of thing. I see. Uh, like which I reckon is why they, they, they're opening with their first route being Joburg, Cape Town. Mm -hmm. You know, totally underserviced as far as I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, no, it looks like it's a, it's a positive thing. And, uh, you know, the sense that uh, this will be an easy business for them to get into because, you know, taxi business is, is relatively, uh, you know, tough, low margin and so on. Right. Whereas airlines, I mean, that's a fantastic business. You know, everybody makes money in airline business, don't they? Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, they're used to working on very small margins, obviously. That's, that's the first <laughs> step. And then, uh, and then secondly, you know, the, 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 they're currently used to using products that are 50, 60, 70 years old. And that's what the airline industry is all about. Fabulous. Uh, You're right, because, of course, people love flying in old airplanes. Absolutely. That the are, older, uh, the better. You um, know, the outside toilets, you know, sort of uh, right, wheels yeah. falling off, that's sound right. of the CV and joint you, and as you take the... Nobody needs a break. Yeah, no, no brakes. No, you know, none of that expensive equipment that you'd need on a taxi. I see. Uh, you I don't see. have to pay speeding fines. You can go as fast as you like up there. Okay, switching gears for a moment. I mean, yeah. the world as we know it, of course, everything looks pretty fantastic. It's right. an open road in terms of uh, economically, things look uh, tremendous. Any thoughts on that subject? On things looking good up in South Africa. Um, I, I am personally uh, slightly less uh, positive than you are, I guess, at the moment, because I, uh, I recently joined the world of people who, who, who just bought a house, uh -huh. and I'm watching my, my investment do absolutely nothing for the past couple months. Uh, and I'm now told that it's going to do absolutely nothing for the next couple months as well. So that's funny um, because I remember when my parents bought a house in the 1970s. Right. They lived in a world where you only bought a house if you really needed somewhere to live, that you didn't right. want to have to deal with a landlord. Right. It didn't, wasn't really something which you anticipated making a big capital return on. And then for that period from the 80s and 90s, it was just like booming and right. everybody was like saying the only way to make money is to go and buy some residential property in an area you can't really afford. Do you think we're going back now to the world where you just have to like uh, suck it up? I don't think so. I think there's always going to be a need for, for a place to live, you know, as, as comfortable as it is underneath bridges and and sleeping in ditches and things. I think people are always going to be looking for a home. And, uh, and when you retire, you don't want to be paying your, your full retirement annuity every year to somebody else. I don't know. Okay, now it's sneakily been referred to me that you are in fact uh, in the entertainment business. Yeah, and, uh, right. you know, we are um, dealing with South Africa where there's a massive pool of cultural enthusiasm. <laughs> Uh, right. Again, I've got a pool of investors. You're telling me that maybe the taxi industry uh, plan to launch an airline is not the place to be. What about the entertainment business? Because I'm assuming right. that the, the margins in entertainment are wonderful. The theatres are always packed. Uh, performers of who course, want to get so started. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the, the popularity <laughs> of theatre. In the industry, in have Africa. an easy time of it. Uh, you know, do you think a media conglomerate that focuses on the on the performing arts is, is the way to go for investors, or is it perhaps a little well, tougher? Well, I, I tend to look at the entertainment industry sort of like, like the Karoo. You know, everybody wants to frack the hell out of it because there's a lot of money to be made. But as far as I can, I can see, uh, if you're only interested in the profit, then you're going to leave a huge mess <laughs> behind afterwards. You know, I mean, look at Justin Bieber. This is what I'm, you know, you need, you need to be, you need investors who want to make a good profit and who also are interested in the art for the art's sake and the entertainment's sake, I think. I mean, and unpacking that, I mean, uh, so theatre in South Africa, how well does that do? I mean, is it a constant struggle? Well, I, I, was, I was at a show at the Market Theatre recently that, I mean, they had seven or eight people there. I mean, we're talking big numbers, you know. We're oh. Seven, eight people, and apparently that weekend they were expecting 11. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I've done shows in front of in front of six and seven in Santon. I mean, we're we're talking, you know, significant r room for growth here. There's, <laughs> you know, this, this can only go upwards as an industry. Spell that out for me, though. So, if somebody uh, wants to get into the business because they have a love of drama or they've right. done that sort of thing at school and so on. Is it really the sort of thing where parents are best advised to try and steer their children to rather be accountants? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, as I say, it's, it's definitely an area where, where there is growth, there's visibility. And I think, I think you're finding a lot more actors and a lot more comedians and a lot more musicians 
you know, appearing on the covers of our magazines and doing well for themselves. I yeah. mean, not everybody's going to be the parlor tones and get their own KFC box, but uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I think people are making a living in it. And, and there's more, there's more comedy on TV, right? So that right, exactly. strikes so me yeah. that there's then got to be opening up space for a sort of yeah. underground circuit that feeds that industry. Right, of course, and I, I think that's actually where the investment would lie is in the underground circuit. You know, a lot of guys are spending a lot of money on on your Barry Hilton and flying him around the country and what have you. And in fact, I think the, the profit and the real mm. and the real benefit and the, the investment opportunities lie with the guys doing shows, you know, the Grahamstown shows. At the moment, people are taking their shows to Grahamstown. That's what I wanted to ask you about. The Grahamstown Arts Festival is on now. I'm yeah. not sure if I've used the right name. It's like the National well, Arts Festival. Something, something. like that, yeah. I mean, is that still as big as it was uh, when I was at school and we used to go down there for the week before the Arts Festival? Or is it even it, bigger it, now? It looks like it's actually pretty big. I mean, reports I've been getting back from there is that the shows are selling up the guys are selling tickets so obviously the people who are going really passionate about it and it's it's a limited niche you know it's yeah. not everybody goes to the Graham Sound. So. and it used to be just big theater production companies that would go That's and do right. like it's sort of limited but now there's a plethora of sort of marginal events and so on including as you say the stand-up guys More and stand -up the individual comedy. performers That's right, yeah. but uh, yeah, there's also you know there's there's always space at the National Arts Festival for guys in, in a leotard who want to do you know, performance dance pieces and uh, in front of three or four people you know okay. <laughs> that's, uh, that's you know that, that's what the arts festival is about i think uh, okay and uh, as far as yourself's concerned right. you're uh, a semi-professional stand-up comedian right. i don't know if that's the right, right term to use uh, when's your next show where are you performing sure. um all over joburg uh, i've got a i've got a website uh, indiecomedy.blogspot.com and all the gigs are down on the right side there excellent excellent there we'll be go. looking out for you well thanks Thank for you coming very much, on Paul.